Today, looking and listening to why I think the Sennheiser MKE 400 is one of the best camera mounted mics you can use for not only traditional cameras, but mobile setups as well. This is the Sennheiser MKE 400 mobile kit. And so we'll take a quick look at what you get in the box. The main thing of course is the actual microphone. Construction feels solid. It's a mix of plastic and I'm assuming aluminum. I think this is a pretty elegant design and the microphone capsule is encased in more or less what I would call a blimp, a very small blimp. And so you get some nice windscreen protection built in also for plosives. There's a gain control, a low cut filter and a power button. And the nice thing is this mic does automatically turn on with your camera or recording device. There's a 3.5 millimeter TRS output connection. And then unlike many of the competitors to this mic, this actually takes two AA batteries. Some people will like that because then you can change it in location. And some people might prefer a rechargeable version, but this one takes batteries. It also has a headphone jack with a volume control, so that's nice. The kit comes with a Manfrotto Pixie tripod, which is pretty cool, I gotta say. That alone is usually like $20. The other thing it comes with is a phone mount, and this is actually surprisingly good. High quality construction and very well made. It'll work with horizontal or vertical shooting setups. It's adjustable to fit pretty much any size phone. Overall, this is a really nice phone mount that is included with this mobile kit. It comes with a TRS cable for traditional camera setups, and then it also comes with a TRRS cable for mobile setups. And just so you don't mix them up, it also has a smartphone label on the actual cable. Now I mentioned the mic is more or less blimped as is. However, if you're shooting in very windy situations, you'll wanna use this dead cat, or some people call it a wind sock. It fits over the mic very easily and it works very well. However, with this on, the mic definitely doesn't look as elegant anymore. It's a little bit bulky, but it does the job. And then lastly, it comes with a soft carrying case. I kind of wish it had a hard case or maybe a little sturdier case, but nonetheless, this does work. So again, this microphone will work with pretty much any kind of camera but I'm gonna primarily focus on using it with smartphones. And one thing you'll notice right away that I really like is that it's very compact. Since it's inherently blimped, you don't have to have a foam windscreen like many of the other mics in this category. Those work fine, but they also make the mic bulkier. And so especially for mobile setups where you're often trying to be maybe inconspicuous or have a smaller footprint, this mic is ideal for those kind of situations. The other thing that's great is when you turn the camera on, the mic turns on. And when you turn it off, it turns off. Now this isn't unusual, but there are other mics in this category that you have to manually turn it on. And I can't tell you how often over the years I have forgotten to turn a mic on, especially in a run and gun situation where you're not monitoring the audio. And speaking of monitoring the audio, that's another great thing about this mic. And in particular, again, for mobile setups, because when you're shooting on an iPhone, you don't often have a way to easily monitor the audio. But with this mic, you do. Now, if you use an accessory like the Rode AI Micro, you can monitor audio that way. And the nice thing is this mic does auto power on using the AI Micro. So plugging in directly to your phone or into the AI Micro, it will power up automatically, which is really great. And the last thing, and really the most important thing for a microphone is, I think this thing sounds amazing. As a matter of fact, all the audio in this video so far has been recorded using the MKE 400. But the best way to really hear how a mic sounds is to compare it to another mic. So now we'll compare this to a comparable mic, and that's the Deity VMic D3 Pro. All right, this is a mic test with the MKE 400. I'm in an interior space, and I'm about arm's length from the camera, about the length the way you would be if you were vlogging or doing a YouTube video. Does anybody vlog anymore though? I don't really think they do. But if they did, or if they do, this is what it would sound like in this room. In my experience so far, this mic sounds really good as a camera mounted style mic, and especially at this range, fairly close to the camera. And so the question is, what do you think? How does the MKE 400 sound to you? Okay, now the same scenario. I'm in an interior location using the Deity VMic D3 Pro. And I'm about arm's length to the camera, about like you would be if you were vlogging. Does anybody vlog anymore? I don't think so, but maybe a few people do. It's still kind of a YouTube setup, being close to the camera. I've used this DD mic off and on for quite a while and I really like it. It's a comparable price-wise anyway to the Sennheiser. The question is, how does it sound compared to the Sennheiser? 
All right, now I'm outside and there is a lot of exterior noise going on. I've got an airplane flying over right now. I'm sitting by my pool, but the pool fountain is behind the camera. So hopefully the off axis rejection is pretty good. This is the MKE 400 from Sennheiser. And I'm about three feet from the camera again, vlogging distance, but who vlogs now? I don't really think anybody vlogs, but is that joke getting old? I don't think so. But the question is, how does this sound outside in a fairly normal but quasi-noisy environment? And by the way, this is completely unsweetened audio, meaning no post-processing. What do you think? Okay, now the same setup, but I'm using the Deity V-Mic D3 Pro. Outside with quite a bit of neighborhood type noise. Another airplane flying over. I guess it's that time of the morning, kind of in a flight pattern here pool behind the microphone. So not sure about the off axis rejection of that mic, but we'll find out when I'm in post-production. And speaking of post-production, this sound has not been altered in any way. This is right out of the camera. No post-processing has been done. So this is the Deity V-Mic D3 Pro. How does it compare to the Sennheiser MKE 400? And now, a word from our sponsor. If you're new to mobile audio production, check out my course, The Complete Guide to Smartphone Audio Production. It's a great beginner's course covering everything from podcasting to voiceovers to on-set video production. So if you're interested, please check it out. Link is in the description. Well, the MK400 had a richer, fuller sound to me, and the off-axis rejection was considerably better. The Deity, which by the way, I do like, sounded almost nasally, at least with my voice, and the mids and the highs were a tad bit boosted as well. So for me, the MK400 was the clear winner. I've been using this mic for at least a month now in a lot of my YouTube videos, and I have to say, it really sounds good. And that's without doing much post-processing. Usually I always will EQ a mic a little bit, add some compression, etc. But this mic, at least with my voice, sounds really good right out of the box. I have very little to complain about this mic. The only negatives I really have are, I feel like the wind sock, once you put that on, the dead cat is kind of bulky and it's a little bit of an eyesore. It has nothing to do with the sound quality because the quality of the sound you use with that sounds good, but it doesn't look quite as elegant as the mic does without the wind sock. The other thing is it doesn't have a right coat support system. So you do have to be a little bit careful with handling noise or mic noise, bumping the mic, bumping the camera. but that too has been pretty minimal in my experience so far, but just something to be aware of. And the only other thing for me is I mentioned at the beginning, it takes batteries. And that's pretty much the way all mics have been powered forever. But I've gotten really used to built-in rechargeable batteries. For instance, the DD mic I compared it to has a rechargeable battery and the various Rode mics I use are all rechargeable. And so that's really more of a subjective thing or what you're used to. Being able to change batteries out though could be a plus because if it runs out on location and you're in the middle of a shoot, you can just pop new batteries in and you're good to go. So really it can be a positive or a negative the way you look at it, but it is just different than a lot of the other mics in this category. So do I recommend it? Yeah, absolutely I do. I've used a ton of mics over the years from Rode and Deity and those are all great, don't get me wrong. And again, mic sounds can be subjective, but for me and to my ears, this is the best small camera mount style shotgun mic that I've ever used. It sounds really good right out of the camera. It's a great setup for anyone wanting to record high quality audio with your mobile phone or a traditional camera. And by the way, I also have the MKE 200, the little sibling to this mic, and I've got their latest lob mic that has a USB-C connection. And so look for videos about those coming in the future. If you're interested in this mic, check out the link in the description. And also check out this video about the AI Micro. I highly recommend that accessory if you're doing mobile video and easily want to record high quality audio. Well, thanks for watching guys. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.